Hello everyone. Welcome back to Pharmacology Further Podcast. And we are going to talk about the November E news letter today. As you all know, as far as talking about pharmacology further is concerned, it's a step further pharmacology. A very warm welcome to all the interested, curious and thoughtful people who like medical sciences as the main course, nutritive salads and sides, and literature and fiction as deserts drizzled upon with spices of creativity at the same time. So we have the November e-newsletter now. Talking about the November e-newsletter, first and foremost, we are coming over to the section, Is Pharmacology Difficult? Here we're going to talk about the November FDA approved drugs. The first on my list is Vonoprezan and the brand name is Voquesna. It was approved on November 1st, 2023 for the treatment of erosive esophagitis. Talking about the mechanism, it's a potassium competitive acid blocker that is capital P dash capital C A B which stands for potassium competitive acid blocker. And the route of drug administration of Vonoprezan is it is administered as tablets, that is the oral route. Talking about the next drug on my list, that is Fruquintinib. And the brand name is Bimzelx. It was approved on November 8, 2023 for the treatment of colorectal cancer. As far as the mechanism is concerned, it is a selective and potent oral inhibitor of capital VEGFR1, capital VEGFR2, and capital VEGFR3 receptor. The route of drug administration is oral and it is given as capsules. Talking about the next drug on my list is the drug is terzepatide and the brand name is Zep Bound. It was approved on November 8th, 2023 for the treatment of weight loss, that is obesity. And the route of drug administration is injection. It is given as injection. As far as the mechanism is concerned, it is a glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide. And this is abbreviated as capital GIP, that is glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide receptor and glucagon like peptide that is glp1 receptor agonist remember it is gip receptor and glp1 receptor agonist it is used for chronic management of weights in the adults coming over to the next drug that is capital a d a m t s 1 3 this is recombinant k r h n and the brand name is Edzyma. It was approved in November 2023 for the treatment of thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. It's a human recombinant, a disintegrant and metalloproteinase with thrombospondin motifs, 13. That is, it can be called as R, that is R for recombinant, and then capital ADAMTS13. It is administered in enzyme replacement therapy that is capital ERT. Talking about the next drug Repotrectinib. The brand name is Octyro. It was approved on November 15, 2023 for the treatment of non-small cell lung cancer. It is administered via oral route that is in the form of capsules. As far as the mechanism is concerned it's a tyrosine kinase inhibitor that is TK1 inhibitor and it's basically used to treat ROS, capital ROS, one positive non-small cell lung cancer. That is capital NSCLC. Coming over to the next drug in the list, we have torolidine and heparin. And the combination is branded under the name of Defencath. This was approved on November 15, 2023 for the prevention of catheter-related bloodstream infections. The catheter lock solution is basically a thiadiazinane antimicrobial anticoagulant combination. And this is administered in patients which are suffering from renal failure 
or who are on hemodialysis and it is given via the central venous catheter that is capital CVC. Coming over to the next drug in the group we have F. bimalinograstim alpha VUXW and the brand name is Rice Neuter. It was approved on November 16, 2023 for the treatment of neutropenia which is associated with chemotherapy. The route of drug administration is as injection and as far as the mechanism is concerned, it is a leukocyte growth factor. Let's talk about the next drug. The name of the drug is Capivacertib and the brand name is Trucap. It was approved on November 16, 2023 for the treatment of breast cancer. The route of drug administration is oral. It is administered in the form of tablets. It's basically an capital AKT inhibitor. It is commonly combined with fulvestrant as therapy. Talking about the last drug on the list, that is Nyrogasistat. And the brand name is Oxivio. It was approved on November 27, 2023 for the treatment of dysmoid tumors. The route of drug administration is oral. It is administered as tablets. And as far as the mechanism is concerned, it's a gamma secretase inhibitor. That's all in the FDA approved drugs in November. Talking about the next subsection under the section is pharmacology difficult we have the latest medical updates and also the health updates they all are combined let's talk about them these cover the latest researches in the field of medicine and health first and foremost information from the journal cancer has revealed that psilocybin substance found in mushrooms it can fight depression especially in patients suffering from cancer the U.S. government considers this psilocybin as a Schedule One substance. As far as the mechanism is concerned, it binds to serotonin receptor. It can make a difference in mood, behavior, and perception. Then, second point under this medical updates, we have some current studies suggest that calcium supplements, they can be associated with kidney stones. But how? That is the most important and interesting part. The calcium, in fact, lowers the risk of kidney stone by binding to the oxalate and preventing its absorption. But you know excess of everything is not good, so if there is excess of calcium, it can deposit. Next point. Some recent researchers suggest that ibogaine derived from the iboga plant in the Central Africa, it is labeled a Schedule 1 drug, but it may be a good choice to treat the opioid drug addiction disorder. Next point, current study reveals a predictable connection between marijuana used by the women, that is pregnant women, and resultant health risk of low birth weight babies of the newborns. It would be very good to avoid the cannabis during the pregnancy to avoid the low birth weight of their newborns. Next point, frequent use of the painkillers should be on greater check if the individual who is taking the painkillers, he has liver or kidney problem, or the individual is pregnant or allergic to certain drugs, or the person has a history of substance abuse, or the person has undergone surgery or suffering from some severe medical problem, then definitely there should be a check on the use of painkillers if it is done frequently. Coming over to the next point. Fentanyl use during pregnancy, it poses serious birth defects in newborn as per the study done in California. The children seem to suffer from cleft palates, small head and bodies and genital irregularities. Coming over to the next point, latest research reveals that tinnitus may be linked to phantom limb syndrome and patients with tinnitus already they are suspected to have underlying hearing loss. That's a great discovery. Coming over to the next point. The solid reasons for the ban of the mustard oil in US and Europe regions, they are basically, they are composed of components like erucic acid and glucosinolates. 
which imparts strong flavor to the mustard oil. Now this erucic acid and glucosinolates, it may actually pose cardiac health problems in experimental animals like mice. Erucic acid is more prominent in causing this risk and due to its high concentration in the mustard oil, FDA has basically approved the non-consumption of the mustard oil in both US and Euro for the food. Coming over to our last point, under the medical research updates, etc., we have women rely on the hormonal therapy during menopause. Everybody knows that. So plain hormonal therapy may pose risk of blood clots. And if the statins, they are added to the hormonal therapy, it may curb the risk of thromboembolisms as suggested by the research in the Texas University. Now talking about all these medical updates and health updates and researchers, I would like to tell everyone that the basic source of all these updates is simply internet and the reliable websites and health research news. And I would like to say that I have picked up the most important ones which I think should be included in this newsletter. Coming over to the next section in Is Pharmacology Difficult? We have From My Classroom. Well, 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 here I'll be sharing some insights of pharmacology learning from the classes that I have taken this month and the topics that I have read all about in my subject. So we're going to talk about anti-cancer agents. They were the recent topic of my study in the class taken. I will be briefing some general points and don't, please don't expect the details or anything about the classification or individual drugs. No, nothing like that. But I will be briefing some general points about the entire cancer agents, which would be of great interest and information to you all. First and foremost, the entire cancer agent, these drugs, they are aimed to cure by two strategies, by either killing the cancer cells or by arresting the growth. Second point, being less selective, these drugs, they are very toxic. Third point, the three aims of the entire cancer drugs, they are as follows. First, complete cure or long-term remission. Secondly, palliation or shrinkage of the tumor. Third, they are used as adjuvant drugs in the chemotherapy. Next point, toxicity of the anti-cancer agents, they may be many fold. Yes, like bone marrow depression, the most common one. Then low immunity result in opportunistic infections. Then we have oral mucosa damage, gut and skin and gonadal damage, secondary cancers and hyperuricemia. So if you have the knowledge of all these things, accordingly, you should employ these drugs. Next, targeted drugs in the anti-cancer agents. They are a group of targeted drugs. They are aimed to attack the selective cells. They are being specially developed and designed in two ways. The first one are the specific monoclonal antibodies. And the second one, we have synthetic small molecular compounds. Next general point regarding the entire cancer therapy, the drugs should be used in maximum tolerated dose, that is capital MTD, and they should aim for complete remission. Next we have combination of drugs, they yield better results than single drug therapies. Next we have Cell cycle specific drugs, they should be used in short time periods or intervals to allow non-cell cycle specific drugs to enter in between the short courses and show their effect. Next important point, associated toxicity of the drugs should be taken at most care of and antidotes etc should be additionally used with the main drug therapy. Some of the examples are folinic acid, mesna, Acetylcysteine, Ondansetron, MI Faustin, Biological Agents, etc. With this, we end the section about Is Pharmacology Difficult, which was really a long one. Coming over to our reading and writing section, Rajan Wiz. Now, from the Rajan Wiz writing desk, what news do I have for you all? Definitely, we have some news. NaNoWriMo was a good going and I aim to release my this year project Ranjo and the Reckless Course of the Air Flight very soon. Yes, this story is done in a Japanese setting. Well, I've revealed one of the secrets of my book. So you can all expect a lot of Japanese settings in the book. 
Well, I'm not going to tell more of it, but yes, this thing I really wanted to tell because that's what I've researched and worked upon. Next, it's a great adventure book. Yes, if you like Wisdom and the Valley of the Dwarfs, you'll love this one too. And kids gotta love this, another wonderful piece of writing from my desk. It's coming up very soon. Coming over to the next section, simple and sparkling. So today it's a time to know cinnamon. Have you noticed these woody like sticks in your kitchen or maybe you simply buy prepared cinnamon powder, whatever it is. Cinnamon is obtained as tree extracts and that is from the tree box. It is basically a spice and it's also a medicine. There are two varieties or two forms of cinnamon. The darker one is cassia cinnamon. It is used mainly in US. While the other one, Ceylon cinnamon, is common in other countries. Now the beneficial properties, which are many. So some of them they are, the cinnamon has antioxidant, antibiotic and anti-inflammatory properties. Then we have Cinnamal dehyde is the main component which is found in cinnamon. Now, cinnamal dehyde or the cinnamon, it helps in lowering the blood sugar and the blood cholesterol. Additionally, cinnamon also contains potassium, magnesium, calcium. Cinnamon protects from cancer, cardiac problems and some unwanted effects faced by people. Sometimes people may have some unwanted effects due to maybe a larger consumption of cinnamon or maybe even a small one well if they're allergic they can be allergic to small consumption also so allergies low blood sugar when the person is having for a longer period of time then cinnamon sometimes shows drug interactions or interactions with other substances and sometimes you should always watch for toxicity because too much of everything is not good lastly i just want to say it's good Cinnamon is a good add-on to food and drinks in moderate amounts, okay? Now we are going to do the last section, the most wonderful one, where we talk about some insights, some learnings, and some positive vibes. So that's off the cuff talks. Today we're going to talk about time. Finding time is an art actually. See, as the childhood changes to grown-ups, one needs to learn the art of finding time and what do you need to find time for especially the things that matter that is most important now we all know there are 24 hours with all of us and how to utilize and find value out of them is truly an art which everyone needs to learn and i mean really mean each and everyone so the first point i want to tell about that cleanliness is the key now, what do I mean by that and why am I talking about it? Because I mean that clean setup and clean surroundings of work. Why are they, how they are related to time? Because they tend to help to get clarif- clarity of vision and ideas. Next, I want to talk about organization is the next step. The right things at the right place while putting the rest into waste is an adorable and smart way to make things haste. I repeat right things at the right place while putting the rest into the waste is an adorable and smart way to make things haste wow that really rhymed well coming over to our next point sorting out tasks especially home and work related is smart idea to get things done quickly and in the time you know you should be very clear like which kind of task we have to do at what time we cannot mix all kind of tasks together right Next, focus. Focus and the presence of mind. They help to save time while doing a task. Time is wasted as one loses focus and mingles in unrelated, unwanted, rubbish tasks, getting deflected from the main task. That is for sure and everybody has experienced this thing. Coming over to the next point, time management tools, apps, gadgets, they all help to make and keep one on the track and keep one on the checks also. You can check yourself with the help of time management tools, apps, and gadgets. Then the next point, setting goals and deadlines can not only save time, but increase and enhance one's performance and productivity also. So if you set up your goals, your time deadlines, you can actually 
combine all these attributes together and work specifically, hastily and focusedly. Next important point, planning and prioritizing. It keeps one ahead of the time. It saves time. It makes smart use of time and adds more time in your spare or leisure time. See, there is one work time, there is one leisure time. If you are planning and prioritizing things, you can put more hours in your leisure time and you can quickly do your or finish over with your work time. Next important tip is to find your best working hours. Well, you can be best working in morning or afternoon or evening and then put your most important task in that particular time to achieve the best results. Suppose that's again related to prioritizing and planning. You know what is your most important task, then you put in your best time and then you get the best results. Next, you have to stay disciplined, consistent and you have to stick to the routine. That comes by practice and really long-term practice. Lastly, I just want to say that one should take breaks, learn to enjoy the leisure time, but don't waste it either. Now, what do I mean by that? See, leisure time means, it doesn't mean wasting time. Leisure time is to give yourself a break, to do something which really gives you pleasure and that makes you relaxed. You can sleep also in that time. Sleeping is not wasting time, but it is giving a relaxation to body and mind. So lastly, ending a note is, there is time for everything. With this note, the time to end the November talk here, the final full stop is soon to arrive. Year end, that is December issue, is also soon to arrive. And then, then after that, the newer saga begins. Yes. After the upcoming December issue, we will end up the story of 2023. And the new year saga gonna begin. It's gonna be the era of 2024. So, have a great and valuable time. Always see you all soon. Thank you, take care, bye-bye.